Hello and welcome back to Infinite Investors, the home for all new and non-investors into the stock market. I'm Curtis and today I've got a new series for you guys and girls. I've got a new series called the Simply Wall Street Journal where I'm going to do a sort of periodic review of my portfolio. Um, not just focusing on what I'm buying or what I'm selling but also you know, some of the fundamentals surrounding my portfolio. Um, any sort of news and information um, and just generally from a review standpoint some this is something that I generally do you know every not every evening but I'll say you know randomly I would inspect my portfolio and see what's going on so I thought you know what why not make a video of it and show it to you guys and hopefully you guys will find it helpful this will not replace my portfolio updates um, in fact one is cupping coming cupping one is coming in the next couple of days um, just because I'm still waiting for a few trades to be executed within free trade which I'm going to talk to you about a bit later on in this video but if you like the sound of that please smash a like on this video please subscribe to the channel if you're new I'm on a mission to get to 2,500 subscribers as soon as possible also don't forget to join our community there's about 50 51 members of our community at the moment um, where you've got like-minded individuals all helping each other out about information to do with the stock market so join the community the link will be in the description um, and don't forget to also check the website um, infinitinvestors.com for other helpful information um, obviously there's videos blogs um, um, and questions that you might have and contact me if you would like to do so right on to the simply wall street journal for today so yeah i wanted to actually um just have a look at some of the um, fundamental information surrounding my portfolio today and also some of the news and um, with a few key particular stocks and um, I really use Simply Wall Street just to kind of um, see from an overview standpoint what is really going on in my portfolio as you guys know I'm with free trade um, and I can't really get a good flavor of what's doing well what's not doing well so um, Simply Wall Street does really really help with that so um, what's the state of play today? Well, the state of play today from a holding standpoint is that I've just made a few purchases today um, with free trade. Now, I've got about £100 left in my account that needs to go back into the market and go back into some stocks. Um, so that's going to happen tomorrow. So it's a little bit light here. You're probably going to see that that will rise to about 10300 and maybe a bit more, etc. Um but yeah, I'll explain a little bit about that um, later on in this video. Now, um, in terms of dividends, I received a dividend today from Imperial Brands, which is good. So that was about an £8 dividend. Um, and again, that's just been added to my account balance. So that hasn't been reinvested. So a lot of that will get reinvested tomorrow. But I did add some new stocks, as I mentioned in my most previous video about buying some ETFs. So as you can see here, um, I bought the Renewables Infrastructure Group. I also bought the JP Morgan Emerging Markets Fund and um, I dabbled and I bought a little bit into the HSBC fund. So um, the reason why I bought renewables and JP Morgan, I explained in a previous video. So the link is in the description. Please go and check that out why I bought those. Um, I said HSBC was a bit of a touch and go. Now, there was another HSBC ETF, sorry, a Chinese market ETF that I wanted, but it's not available on free trade. So I thought, you know what, um, I'm going to expose myself to this ETF um, and, you know, see how things go. And what I've actually decided to do, the liquidated stocks here are hidden, um, but I've decided that I've actually sold Weibo, which was my only um, Chinese stock, um, and I've put the funds into the HSBC ETF well not all of the funds actually I had some funds in the account so anyway that money will get reinvested and I thought you know what rather than buying singular stocks into the Chinese market I think at this stage I'm just going to um, go into an ETF I think have a broader exposure into the Chinese market rather than trying to select specific stocks um, which I feel I can do a lot more confidently with US and UK stocks than Chinese stocks so um, I bought Weibo it seemed undervalued it seemed fine um so if we go into Weibo, we can actually see the data um it still seemed undervalued it seems still that's growth in there the peg ratio is pretty decent um which i can't complain the price to earnings ratio you know versus the interactive media market and the market is actually strong so there was nothing fundamental the, the the forecast for performance in the future is quite strong um and yeah it, it's it's that you know it's not got that much debt 
um, so the debt situation is all right it doesn't pay a dividend but that's fine um, and yeah so there's nothing particularly wrong with this stock per se but I just felt that you know what rather than having two free trade accounts it was becoming a bit of a ball ache if I'm honest um, and also rather than having to um, really uh, monitor one specific Chinese stock I thought you know what I'm gonna have a more broader exposure into the Chinese market will I regret the decision well if Weibo jumps up 120% in the next you know six months maybe so but if it goes up by say 10 15 percent i'm not going to really be worried about it too much i didn't have that much in there in relation to my overall portfolio exposure so um yeah that wasn't really the biggest um pain point for me and I'm, i feel much more confident having um, a chinese etf at this current stage that that feels like the right um decision for me at this current moment if you're looking at the ones that are sort of shining green um, you can see Sentiment, First Solar, Barrett. They're, they're the ones right now that um, are looking really, really strong. Sentiment, as you know, is a gold miner. Um, and because of what's been happening with um, fiat currency and the economy from Trump, China, trade war, etc. scenarios, people were hedging not only in cryptocurrency, but in commodities. Gold being um, one of the key commodities that gets hedged against. Um, and Sentiment being a gold miner obviously benefits from that. So Sentiment grew quite recently. I was trying to have a look at um, what analysts are saying about Sentiment um, going forward and what the outlook looks like. Um, and I think I think 110p seems like... Um, one of the one of the main sort of average price so there's a there's a there's an analyst um signal of holding on sentiment i only added a small amount so in the portfolio update i'll explain how much i added but it was a very small amount this month just because sentiment had rose so much um i really really didn't want to add uh, my normal amount so you, i will talk about that more in my portfolio update let me get rid of that just so um it's easier um so yeah but but great news for sentiment it's been doing really really well first solar as you know i bought that a few months ago and it's been going from strength to strength i wish i bought more at the beginning um cuz it was 25% up the first time round the second time i invested it was 16% up now it's 13% up you know the most recent time so you know it's probably had um an accumulative gain of about 40 percent or something since i originally bought so really happy with um first solar and if we sort of take a look um at first solar here you can see it's incredibly still undervalued this is where um it's projected to get to in the next one to three years so um will it reach that well i i sure hope so i sure hope it will reach that um but you know it's a it's a fantastic um opportunity um from my personal standpoint so i'm really really um happy with the growth in first solar the future performance looking at 38 percent um so again i'm still happy with with that um there's no debt there's obviously a lot of physical assets um and yeah i think it's um it's it's generally a good um a good buy what's the let me see what the depth is actually it says first of the level of debt compared to its net worth is satisfactory the level of debt has increased okay so it has increased from 4.3 to 11.4 percent so if it does increase you do get x against that operating cash flow is negative therefore debt is not well covered okay so that's less so the debt more than the actual cash flow uh, which I think is probably the reason why it's undervalued as well. So that makes a little bit of sense. Unable to confirm if the interest payments on first orders that are well covered. Okay, so this is something that they're unable to confirm. So again, it's not not too shocking and obviously there's no dividend uh there's no dividend there for first solar but yeah really really happy with with the way first solar is performing um and also barrett barrett is doing uh pretty well as well currently at 11.68 percent um when you look at it from a value standpoint there's still a decent amount of growth from a share price and from a value standpoint um the pe ratio for barrett is um, pretty high compared to the rest of the market so as you can see this black line here uh, shows that the PE ratio at the moment is 8 and the market at the moment is 16.4 um, and its sector is 9.9 .9. so it's a strong it's still strong in terms of price to earnings price to earnings growth as you've seen in my in my um in my fundamentals videos you want to try and get to the to the one mark um, so it's okay it's okay it's not amazing but it's good it's uh it, well i mean technically here it's not that great but it's not the worst i've seen worse obviously um so that's not um 
something that I'm too concerned about at the moment. And obviously, as you can imagine, with all of the houses, loads of inventory, loads of, inventory, loads of assets, um, very good from a debt standpoint. Um, current dividend yield is pretty high and it's expected to be 8.27% next year. So, you know, Barrett for me is a very strong um, business, which I will continue to invest in and have no no signs, no causes for concern in order to um, make any changes um, there. Now, I'll leave all of the mediocre orange or yellow ones, etc. But Imperial Brands is about 15.64%. What what I'm noticing with Imperial Brands as well is um and I'll and I'll just in fact I'll 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 make this clear now. So it's still very undervalued, um, which is the reason why I'm still being patient with Imperial Brands. I understood why the price share price dropped quite significantly due to its last earnings. And so if that repeats in the next earnings, then it might be um, uh, a situation where we have to really consider whether I'm going to continue having Imperial Brands onto the portfolio. But um, I think, you know, after the next earnings, we shall see. Um, it plays quarterly dividends, which is right. But one of the key things is it's got a lot of debt. It's got a lot of debt. It's quite high. Um, and so because of the amount of debt, um, and obviously because that they're really trying to supercharge their growth it does put a little bit of a, a a tainted view shall we say on the outlook of imperial brands going forward so you know i'm monitoring this one closely um in terms of what i'm going to do with it um but at the moment obviously i'm still going to hold i'm losing about 100 pounds on it I'm not, i don't really want to sell that and sell that loss so i'm going to continue on the positive it did pay me a dividend today of eight pounds so you know that's obviously reduced some of the um the losses um however the dividend percentage uh, for next year is aiming to be 11.92 percent it's currently just shy of 10 percent and it plays a quarterly dividend which for a uk stock um i would say is rare but not a lot of them play quarterly dividends um i would say so that is quite positive news um, and a positive reason to still hold um imperial brands as well now what i'll do i'll i'll move along to um this lovely wheel here so this wheel here obviously shows you um which is in green you know plus 10 percent minus 10 percent and the sort of amber stages um, and it's a lot more green than it was, you know, a month ago, which is which is really, really good. It's good and positive to see. Sometimes I'm torn between seeing everything green just because it means that I'm buying buying stocks at a premium price. You know, the way I like to see it is that if it is red, you are getting a discount. If you go to, I don't know, Tesco and you buy um, some toilet roll at two pounds um, and the next week you go back there and the toilet roll is now two pounds thirty. It means that the toilet roll is actually a lot more valuable, but you're paying the price to buy a toilet roll again at £2.30. Now, um, if the toilet roll was now £1 when you went back the next week, then obviously it means that the toilet roll um, is at a discount and maybe you should stock up um, just in case toilet rolls do go back up to £2. You've already are benefiting from that, from that, um, from that drop. So... Drops are good. I like to see drops as a good thing. I like to see them as a buying opportunity, providing that the stock is a good stock from a fundamental standpoint. Not every drop is good. Um, so you have to kind of offset it with a bit of qualitative analysis and try to understand a little bit about what's happening with the stock. But overall, um, I think, you know, only Imperial Brands in the deep red and Vodafone Group in a slight uh, orangey colour um are the two things to really look out for but i think vodafone i'm still confident from a 5g standpoint and again my horizon for getting a good a good return on vodafone was by the end of the year which you can see from the very first video when i bought vodafone that's what i said at the beginning um and that's the position that i'm maintaining so it will be interesting to see what happens um from that standpoint from a diversification standpoint, the portfolio looks a lot more diversified um, in terms of the amount of companies you can kind of see in this donut, um, which is really, really good to see. And you can see now the percentage of holdings, which is really, really good to see. So as you can see, I think the highest is Aviva's 11.83% and Taylor Wimpy's 10.89%. Um, but I think, you know, on average, you could probably say I have, you know, maybe you know with some at the 1.94 percent and some at the two percent and some at six 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 five five eleven on average it's probably like seven percent equal split across all stocks maybe maybe six percent equal split across all stocks um which i think is good 
which I think is good from a diversification standpoint um, company. I don't think I'm overexposed into any one company. The companies I do hold the most is purely because they've given me the best returns. So, you know, that can't really be a bad thing. From a from a sector and an industry standpoint, you guys remember in a previous video that I think I was about 30% in banking and another 25% in insurance. I'm still 25% in insurance purely because legal in general and Aviva are doing pretty well. So, um, again, I can't really complain that I've got more um, assets under management with um, legal in general and Aviva purely because they've given me um, some of the best returns. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, however, banks have happily reduced it, which is great. They might reduce further. I am considering what I'm going to do with CYBG. CYBG is a stock that I am... I've, I've toyed between do I get rid of it and do I not and these are the reasons for and against so for getting rid of it um one is a it's a yearly dividend which is a bit naff so you know from a from a getting an income standpoint to kind of offset some of your capital gain loss um it doesn't really help me in that standpoint too it seems overvalued now where it was undervalued at the time that i purchased obviously things have changed and it's overvalued now so that's something i need to really um really really consider um that's a positive is that the outlook and the performance is is really quite strong also they might rebrand fully to virgin money i think i saw some news articles where if i type in cybg do, 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 do. Um, soon to be Virgin Money, UK push for growth of CYBG rebrand. Looks to Branson brand. Yeah, so I think, I think, like a Virgin channel. York's just will be no longer with his Yeah, I th rename all operations to Virgin Money. I think CYBG is going to rebrand to Virgin Money based off this. Um, I'm watching the Women's World Cup in English just scored Go England, go. Now, back to business. Um, that, I think, is a positive move. Now, the Virgin brand is very, very synony synonymous with, obviously, Richard Branson, entrepreneurialism. It's got a strong brand, strong brand recognition. Um, and so I think that that could be a positive in its favour. And you know how the market moves to sentiment. Also, people don't know CYBG, but they know Virgin. So if they see... Um, if they see Virgin, the ticker symbol, and they see Virgin in their in their brokerage accounts when they're looking at their stocks, they're more likely to potentially invest. So that could have a positive impact. So I am kind of willing to hold. At the moment, I'm still in profit with CYBG, probably about £30, nothing major, but um, it, I am toying on whether or not. Now, the debt obviously is pretty high, as you can see here. Um, it seems like actually they're doing well in terms of managing their assets and liabilities, um, but it seems like there is quite a high level of debt, so that's something I need to obviously monitor. Um, again, 1.61% is not great for a dividend, but it's going to increase to 5.41%. I would never hold just for that because there's other stocks that I've got um, and there's other stocks out there that will pay a higher one and more frequently. So, um, yeah, uh, uh, it will be interesting to see what I do there. But, you know, I only say that to say this, that banking may reduce so that I'm not too overexposed into the banking sector. Now, when you're looking at the diversification across industries, it does not include ETFs. So this is purely based off the equities that I currently hold and not the ETFs. So there is obviously um, probably about still a 60%, 62%, 62%, um, actually probably 67% in insurance, uh, housing and banking, um, which still seems quite high, but they've kind of done the best except the banking, I would say. Um, and so, yeah, I probably do need to have a little bit more work done to reduce that. But obviously, it doesn't take into consideration my S&P 500, my Robo Global, my Trig, my JP Morgan, my HSBC Chinese market. Um, those stuff aren't taken into consideration at the moment. So actually, if you probably add all of that, this would be diluted uh, quite some bit. Now, from a value standpoint, so again, if you look at my shares as a fund, um, it shows you, you know, what the value of it should be in one to three years. Um, and 
it's very undervalued and hopefully it should get to this figure in terms of its current you know future cash flow share price increase projection so you know i'm really really um, optimistic about this current portfolio i think it's in a bit of a healthier state than it was in the light in sort of two to three months ago um, and hopefully it can continue to go in the right direction but obviously if things start to fall out um, in terms of the direction i like to see it then like i've done with weibo like i've done with man group i will prune tweak um, and move things oh the england goals were removed from var oh it's a tight one still uh, it's a bit of a sticky one um yeah i will kind of prune it prune it how i sort of see fit so you know we shall see from a value standpoint in terms of um ratios from a price to earnings ratio um my portfolio is better than the british average so the british average is 16.4x mine's 11.4x again just so you know what price to earnings i'm going to give you the short answer here but there's obviously videos explaining it in a bit more detail um, this 11.4x multiple is basically if you bought at this price how many years would it take you to make your money back effectively now obviously you want to make your money back quicker so the lower the number is the better it is um, so the current gb market is 16.4 times for me it's 11.4 times which is good um, price to earnings growth you want to it's anchored to the value of one so you want to try and get your peg ratio as close to one as possible if you can get it less than one then that's you know bang on mate do you know what i mean good on you but um, you want to get it close to one currently i'm at 2.1 so it's not the greatest um i think i definitely need to keep it under two so i might need to do some creative accounting and move some things around um in order to make sure that i have a stronger growth uh, forecast um price to book ratio is pretty well it's bang on in terms of the market average 1.5 and i'm 1.5 as well um so that's yeah that's quite positive to see um, in terms of future performance the overall annual growth currently at the moment is 13.3 percent with all of my stocks um so that's positive um and the gp market average is 10.6 percent so i try and compare myself to the gp mark the gp <laughs> the not the gp because they don't really help um the gb the great british the great britain market average um and the reason why I do that is um, primarily um, it helps me give me a, a bit of an understanding on where I'm at in terms of, you know, other investors in the UK. Um, and if I'm working, if I'm sort of performing above or below, um, you know, the market averages of, of investors in my in my sort of region. So that's what I currently look at. Well, that's what it compares me to anyway. Um, and I think that's that's probably the right thing. So, yeah. I am expected uh, a better future performance than the market average of about 7%, which would be great for this year. Um, and obviously future average of 13.33% in earnings, which will be great as well. So I am, these are just earnings within and revenue within the current stocks that I hold, but you know, that's obviously gonna relate to a share price increase. So uh, that's positive. The past performance for me is not really uh, indicated that I care about too much, primarily because you know the portfolio only started in december so you know why i'm not really going to be caring about um years past performance averages so i'm just going to scoot past that um and here in terms of the health now obviously as you can see there's quite a lot of debt there's quite a lot of debt so i looked at you know some of the key offenders of this debt in my portfolio um you've got imperial brands as you guys um saw um i think vodafone was one of those there was another one i mentioned i saw it yeah uh cybg verizon uh barclays you know those those ones here where are they let me find one of them barclays um just high levels of debt really um which obviously is making my as you can see you know that big red splodge over there you know a lot of level of debt and you know all of the analysis about that um cybg i think we've already we've already covered that one off um vodafone um is another one that had quite a significant um level of debt uh where's vodafone i can't find anything these days it's like the sorting options is really really for right, there you are <sighs> that was more difficult than it should have been um so as you can see vodafone um quite a significant level of debt there in the balance sheet um and yeah all of the information is there about it 
Um, the great thing about this, guys, is that you guys can go and check these stocks out and all of the information will be exactly the same because on these pages, it's not tailored to me per se. It's actually just the stock itself. Um, it's only on this portfolio page does it kind of bring that information um, rel relative to my uh, current. So, yeah, there's a little bit of debt, more than so I would like. Debt is not necessarily a bad thing, but debt, how it's managed, if it's increasing rather than decreasing, if they don't have enough assets to cover it, um, then obviously, uh, or cash flows, then obviously it can be a negative thing. So it's something to monitor. At the moment, my dividend yield annually is 6.38%, which is pretty decent. Um, and that's equating to about £651 per year in dividends. So, you know, what I'm really looking for is definitely to get into, I would say, £100 a month on average in dividends. That's the sort of target I'm looking at. So I'm looking at about a £1,200 pounds a year um dividend return which then would equate to um percentage where oh, i've got it depends actually it depends on how much i've invested so that's going to be pretty hard to work out off off the top and um, that's definitely not quick maths but yeah i think value wise 1200 pounds so that's what i'm going to try and get to and achieve to and that for me i would like to be the baseline to be getting a nice 100 pounds a month um, in dividends which can be reinvested is pretty cool um, but in terms of you know the key dividend uh, returnees at the moment and this is based off this year's um, dividend current dividend yields as you know dividend yields obviously change on a day-to-day -day basis because it's based off the share price but but um, it's a good flavor that you know Taylor Wimpy Imperial Brands Barra Aviva um, they're doing really really well um, then I'd say Vodafone Legal, um, Lloyd's, Barclays and Trig um, are, are what I would expect. That's sort of my minimum standard. That's like average. And then obviously Verizon, Sentiment, Chevron, TYBG and JP Morgan is a bit less than what I would really like in a dividend. But it's no big deal. They're solid. A lot of them are, are solid stocks and solid ETFs. So um i'm happy with it from that standpoint and obviously there's there's a little bit of news um one thing i wanted to look at is what is going on with first solar um, in terms of news and so um if we have a look at first solar i've noticed one thing whereby um first solar is going to they're in talks of selling assets to um india um, and if you look at the indian market and obviously energy so energy in terms of you know traditional energy oil got coal gas etc crude oil is is extremely expensive um and obviously we obviously know about the harming effects in the environment etc now coming from me personally i've had the opportunity to work in india um and live in india for a while actually let me not let me not I, it wasn't a while it was like a month but I lived in India for a bit um, and the pollution in India and the amount of cars in India and the actual fog and the mist like honestly it's horrendous it's so it's so massive so you know India's a population of what 1.2 billion maybe more if first solar can you know penetrate that market with um with solar panels on roofs um and i don't think they even have to take a significant market share i think they just have to take you know even if it's like a percent or two percent of that market i think that's going to have a significant impact to their performance so that's just one thing i noticed and just being someone that's been in india seeing the amount of homes and also from a from a household standpoint in india that's going to be really really much more cost effective um for the citizens there as well um, and obviously if they're doing it from a from a business standpoint um likewise um, and I think emerging markets, India is probably, you know, the economy that the world needs to really be looking out for. India is the economy that they've just got. They've just got a lot of things on their side. They've got a very, very powerful workforce, very intelligent workforce. Um, a lot of things are being outsourced to India. Um, and I just think, you know, they're, they're definitely one to watch. So, you know, with First Solar branching out, I think this is a really good move. Again, this is all my personal opinion, guys. I could be talking a whole bunch of hot air, a whole bunch of waffle, um, which actually is completely meaningless. But um, based off my, you know, understanding of bits and bobs, um, it seems like um, it seems like a really, really good move. So I just wanted to to put that one out there and throw that one out there but yeah that's a that's the sort of 
um, review of what's the state of play is with my current portfolio. As I mentioned, there's a few more purchases I need to make, which I'm going to make tomorrow. Um, that will be done by 4 p.m. Um, those purchases. Um, I'm transferring money from my basic into my ISA account. Um, so those purchases hopefully will, will all get done. Um, and then I can do a proper portfolio update for you guys to see where the portfolio is at. Um, and what it means and you know why I purchased some of these new things etc etc um, but hopefully you liked the Wall Street the Simply Wall Street Journal episode one um, I'll try and do these as frequently as I possibly can um, and it's good just to kind of reflect and see what's going on with your portfolio so it's something that I would highly encourage with you guys and making sure you guys keep abreast of what's going on with your portfolios however big or small I talk to a lot of you guys uh, which talk about you know how how big um, should you invest how much money should you have invest in does it matter if I only have a hundred pounds two hundred pounds listen it all matters and it's all positive um, and you're doing the right thing so irrespective of balance um, don't really watch that do you know what I mean it's not really something you should focus on focus on the behavior focus on trying to buy the right stocks and having a great eye for stocks um, and obviously once your balance increases and your earnings increase which naturally will happen in time then obviously you'll be you know in the right position which is you know really really positive so you know keep it up guys keep it up um keep all the questions um coming in um keep all the comments coming in even if you think i've said anything wrong keep that coming in i remember somebody in a comment in my previous etf video told me that you know curtis the renewables um, infrastructure group and jp morgan aren't actually etfs they're right it's not they're not technically etfs but it just felt easier to cover them as etfs um they're they're i mean this is a closed-end fund i think they're both closed-end funds actually um and so there is slight nuance difference but you know fundamentally um fundamentally sorry um they're pretty much the same so this is the reason why i i put it in as an etf in the etf video but yeah if you've got any questions definitely get in the comments um please like please comment please subscribe and i'll be back next time with a portfolio update that's to come this week and also probably another wall street simply wall street journal um and yeah guys have a great have a great evening have a great week and i'll catch you next time happy investing take care